Hey everyone, Don Thurn with Thurn Fabrication. In this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of our track bar and its advantages over the factory track bar, why you need it, and why it's built in fine detail. Every little feature of it, how it's been fine tuned over the last 15 years. Stay tuned. All right, so bend in the track bar. This is the bend that clears the differential cover. It's as relaxed or as minimal of a bend that we could do to clear the factory OEM differential cover. The more bend you put, the weaker it's going to be. And often people wonder why we didn't put more of a bend so it can clear aftermarket differential covers and things like that. But ultimately, strength of the track bar is most important to us. So it's as relaxed of a bend as possible. So this is the bend down at the axle side. This bend needs to be there for travel. The upper side of the joint will hit the axle when you increase suspension travel. So to prevent any contact, this bend needs to be there. But we counter and put this bend also. And that just helps on the newer trucks. The steering damper bolts and things like that are kind of hanging out. And then another key thing is this bend right here having this bend here also counters so that the straight line drawn through here counters this bend so you don't have a big bow in the track bar here's a shot how we're trying to keep that somewhat straight line through the ends make sure the bends cancel each other and the track bar doesn't turn into a big spring when you put loads through it our older track bars didn't used to be this way but over the last couple of years now having the uh, CNC bender in-house, we've added bends. It's just so easy to do. So here's a better look at the factory bushing and the way it's built for the 2013 Plus trucks. Actually pretty smart when you look at the loads just going straight through it. Pretty durable because you have that big center aluminum slug. So you've got surface area and that thin black area but after the aluminum is the rubber so you've only got that uh you know three sixteenths three sixteenths or so of an inch thick piece of rubber that goes the entire way around that aluminum slug but having that big area you can see why the factory track bar doesn't want to rotate because you're only flexing that thin little layer of rubber uh, around that big slug and it's all vulcanized together solid so it does not want to rotate around that center uh, crush sleeve aluminum piece. So our track bar uses a very hard replaceable polyurethane bushing. It's actually it feels more like plastic. It's real, you know, real rigid. Almost feels like it could shatter if you hit it with a hammer. And then that center sleeve is very hard 17-4 stainless steel that rotates inside of it. So you've got unlimited rotation. Uh, you know, it doesn't, unlike the factory rubber bushing that binds up as it rotates, this one allows it to spin freely. It is very tight when new and installed, uh, but you just keep pumping grease through it and wait for it to break in. So the bushing housing is machined in-house out of two and a quarter OD, three eighths wall, 1026 DOM tube, welded to the main tube, which is inch and a half OD, three eighths wall, as previously noted. And it's the tubes are laser cut, so and they're actually cut on a machine that copes the ends pre-welding. So these welds are extremely durable because there's about two, maybe even three passes in some places of this track bar weld. So it's super durable. And we often get you asked why we don't use chromoly, um, and and it's kind of just the fact that chromoly is great. It's just once you bend it, it it. it doesn't hold up as well as DOM. It gets a little more brittle. And then personal opinion, anytime you weld chromoly, pretty much, you know, you're heating up that area so much, chromoly really needs to be uh, heat treated afterwards. And you can get by without doing it, but just personal opinion, chromoly is a little more brittle, doesn't like to bend. And these track bars are gonna bend. They go through crazy amount of force driving down the road. And 1026 DOM is just a little more durable, not quite as rigid, not as overall strong, but over time, not going to come apart like chromoly can. Um, 
kind of splitting hairs there. But anyways, we get asked that question a lot. Got to touch on that FK rod end. This is where you want chromoly. These things are strong, Teflon lined. Those are our stainless machined in-house 17.4 stainless adapters, misalignment spacers, jam nut, and then that machined end of the track bar. Here's another important feature of our track bar. This is the tap we use to thread the end of the tube. So instead of welding in an end, which is standard for this type of part, uh, welding in an end softens the threads and uh, makes them weaker, things like that. So we actually drill the tube a little bit oversized. It's a 3 8 wall thick, inch and a half OD DOM tube. So we take a little bit of material out of the inside and then we wedge this tap through. You can actually see that there's no teeth on here that are that's removing material. This is actually wedging itself into the bar and cold forging it. This is done on our CNC lathe. It takes a lot of horsepower to turn that and wedge that into the metal to create those threads. But once done, they're super strong, cold forge threads. One last thing to touch on. I forgot to bring a factory bolt with me, but a lot of people always you know, ask us, why does the bolt not fit tight inside this sleeve? Like, you know, this actually, the tap actually turns out to be almost the identical size of the bolt. And that slop like that is pretty normal to see. Doesn't really matter, it's not important. The entire concept of this design is that when you bolt the track bar between the flanges, the squeezing force of the flanges, squeezing that sleeve is what holds it in place. The bolt side to side uh, tolerance does nothing. Why well, you wouldn't want it, but I mean, even if the bolt was theoretically a quarter inch too small and was extremely sloppy, that really wouldn't matter if theoretically you could get it tight enough because it's that clamp force between the flanges which is holding this still. All right, so I'm gonna go a little bit into why you want a track bar. There's gonna be other videos in the future that'll go in more depth into the actual handling advantages and things, but generally, these rubber bushings, as noted, when you clamp this big end in the frame and at the axle, because you've got two of these bushings that aren't gonna move. This, if I clamp this right now in my hand and couldn't move it, and I picked this track bar up, it would wanna spring back. It's got force loaded through those rubber bushings. And so, when your suspension cycles, it doesn't, this is acting like a spring that's actually pushing up and down on your passenger side, fighting those forces. So you, you can get some weird porpoising effects and sometimes feel your chassis do a little left to right action after you go over a perfectly straight bump, but you feel side to side movement. A lot of that can be the bound up track bar bushings. So while we say these can hold up pretty well for 20,000 miles, it's really mostly on a stock truck where you're not getting a whole lot of movement. You know, this is suspension travel. You might be getting three, four inches of travel out of, out of daily use. No, that's okay on these bushings. Once you put our springs on, now you're getting a lot more rotation. This small amount of rubber there does not like going in this direction. So once you put our suspension on, this, the factory track bar from, for the, uh, regarding the 2013 and up trucks can last for a little while but you really should consider it a mandatory part. Um, our track bar, these bushings, are free to move 360 degrees, so there's no binding there on either end. So this isn't doing anything or putting any forces into the suspension. It's allowing it to float and do what it wants to do and move freely. And then the biggest thing of all, these rubber bushings, they're rubber. It's not gonna be rigid. When you steer, and you turn the steering wheel, the drag link is pushing this direction. And the only thing countering those forces is the track bar. So if the track bar is allowed to flex, you put that motion into your steering wheel trying to steer the truck, that force isn't getting to the wheels because it's being absorbed by the rubber bushings. And then counter to that, if you are driving down the road, just driving straight, holding the steering wheel and you hit a pothole, if the whole axle is allowed to shift because this is what's holding the axle laterally side to side in the truck. If the axle is allowed to shift side to side, you're gonna feel that through your steering wheel. So that's a good indication of when your track bar bushings do go out 
is just driving down a straight road hitting bumps and you can feel a little kickback in your steering wheel. That's the actual whole axle moving side to side. So that's why you want as rigid of a track bar as possible. Stiff ends, free to rotate, bends that counter themselves, rigid material, um, all things like that add up to the best handling truck you can get. So in conclusion, if you have a 2003 to 2012 truck, even on a bone stock truck with no modifications, the bushings compared to the 2013 newer trucks, this is the 2013 and newer track bar. The bushings on the 2003 to 2012 trucks are very loose, even brand new. You can drive a, a 2010 truck brand new off the lot, make no changes to it, install our track bar, and immediately notice a handling uh, steering quality benefit. Uh, 2013 and newer trucks, 20,000 miles or so, these bushings should hold up great, but after that, we're seeing them go out pretty quick. Just depends on use and modifications done. Track bar though, in general, for all Dodge Rams, pretty much consider it a mandatory upgrade if you want the best handling truck you can get. It makes a massive difference. Thanks everybody.